Hey guys, welcome back to the stream. This is Conflict Futures Analytica, bringing you guys another live futures trading session. We're gonna be starting the day out here, just gonna be arming it in both directions inside of regression mode. That's just due to this automatically derived zone at both the 17.622 level and the 17.634 level right there on my screen. We just got filled long. We're gonna be rearming it, of course, to queue up the next trade. Just won this trade. So starting out today pretty well at 400 on the day. Just got filled short there, which is gonna put us back into the range if we win the trade. We're going to be keeping a good eye on Delta here. Just going to want to be watching that, especially if we end up getting stopped out. Yeah, we did get stopped out there. We do have correlated Delta. So that is going to be leading us to switch into trend mode along with that loss. It closed out that derived zone there back down to $61 on the day. Just got filled long, end up winning that one. So uh, now we're up to 500 on the day. Hope that trend switch made sense there, especially with the close of that bar and the correlated Delta. This one's also likely going to close unless we get resistance at that. Russell will ask, does this work for any asset, FX, gold, FTSC, etc.? So with some assets, it will work better than others, but with anything that is tradable on NinjaTrader, it will trade for you. I don't necessarily recommend Forex, but that's just because I haven't had any real experience on it. But order flow data on Forex can be fragmented just due to the fact that we don't have a centralized exchange for Forex. So keep that in mind. But yes, you can trade gold specifically. There are a lot of people who have had pretty solid success on gold with polarity. That would be the GC futures contract. So we're just going to be continuing to watch this here. Um, you can see we had at 816, we had the Delta divergence and we haven't had another one yet, but it, it does have potential here to form another divergence, which would put us into regression mode. Ended up not really having a solid divergence there, but that is not a correlation between Delta and price. See, we got a very large movement in the downward direction no wick and we only had negative three delta so it uh, looks like we ended up getting filled anyway i'd say it's likely that we'll probably lose that trade but if so we are going to be switching into regression mode we ended up calling that one knew that was going to happen it was a little bit late just because i was you know trying to explain what was going to happen but unfortunately that did end up causing us to lose that one but just got felt short there sorry i was reading questions us individual asked, hey, Connor, new customer here. would like to ask, is there any specific reason you're trading NQ over ES these days? So essentially, NQ has just been so consistent in terms of volatility over the past couple of days, um, or sorry, not past couple of days, um, over the past actually whole year that I haven't had any real reason to switch back to ES. Um, I haven't even really looked at ES. I don't know if it's been volatile recently, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with trading it. I just prefer to trade times that are not as close to market open, just easier for me and my schedule. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with ES. It's just that I, when I was trading it last year during this exact time, which is about 8.30 Pacific Standard Time. We were having a lot of issues with volatility, just nothing was really happening. And I just didn't really enjoy that at all. So NQ has been the way. Jasmine just asked, can you explain the derived zone? The one at 8.15 is closed versus the derived zone at 8.18 stretches throughout the whole chart. Not totally certain which one is the 8.18 one that was stretched throughout the whole chart, but I'm gonna assume you were talking about this one. That was just because we didn't get a clean break through here until here and that one closed. So see this one, now, unless you're talking about this one, which has continued to stretch, and that's just because it hasn't been broken through yet with a, with a bar close. So guys, good rule of thumb. If you're, if you're using stack ticks, like for example, on NQ, you're using stack ticks of four, you're compressing four ticks down into one visually. So this 16 and 52 level, for example, is actually four ticks wide on NQ, where on ES, there would be nothing. So if you're, if you're not doing that, then you're gonna wanna use diagonal. And then if, course you are on compression you're going to want to use horizontal just because diagonal when using single tick is going to be more accurate determining imbalances so i actually know for a fact that it does not breach their policy they have a quote unquote blanket ban but this is actually more discretionary than you think the reason why they have this ban is to prevent people from doing latency arbitrage and news arbitrage on their platforms and they can't outright say that but that is actually the reason why so ours do neither of those things we do not perform latency or news arbitrage so you are actually safe to use this on a we also of course have you have to automatically rearm the strategy every time it enters a trade there. So unless you're using the auto arm button, you should face absolutely zero issues because it's technically not an automated bot. It is just as automated as let's say an ATM strategy. If they were to ban ATM strategies, you think that would be a little bit silly. And that is the same concept that we have here. So we made sure that it is not considered to be fully automated by APEC. We end up losing this trade here. We're gonna be throwing that into regression at this point, just because of this high amount of chop and we haven't necessarily been getting correlated. Again, we missed that at 823 there, it's unfortunate, but 
Also guys, if you're trying to train your own model to take quite a bit of trades, make sure you actually specify that the model should be trying to do that. In your, when you're setting up your system, there is a variable you can set. It just says target number of trades. And by default, that sets five and that's per hour. So if you set that to five per hour, it's going to try and put you into five trades per hour. I have mine set to 30. I would suggest increasing that if you are trying to achieve that outcome. Do skip some trading days and that would be news days and in any day where i'm seeing that news or fundamental analysis that's just because order flow trading is based off of market microstructure and market microstructure is most relevant when the market is already efficient so during times when news days are coming out the market hasn't fact efficiently factored in all the information that's out there yet so you're going to be getting moves that may not correspond to order flow and you're going to get a lower efficacy of your trades. So that, that's why I avoid those days. But um, other than that, it's just from my schedule. Also, guys, if you are getting min and balance volume that is outside of your expected range, make sure you set a maximum expected range. And of course, that is important during the trading process as well. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching today. I do appreciate you guys tuning in. 